So how big is an earthquake? How big is an earthquake? How big is an earthquake? Well, you know they vary. Some earthquakes they can't like even hardly feel. And some uh, earthquakes you can totally feel. So how big are earthquakes? Well, we're going to learn about how we can determine how large an earthquake is in today's podcast. Well, here we go. We're going to talk about some words. Intensity. That's really intense. Magnitude. What in the world is that? Amplification. You have an amplifier on your uh, stereo system, don't you? Yeah, and liquefaction. Everybody say liquefaction. Liquefaction. Now, there's a word. Say, that's what we're going to learn about today. Hey, let's talk, talk about intensity. Now, intensity is how much energy that you feel or how, how, how much you feel like you're shaking in a particular um, earthquake. So it's, it's uh, how, how strong it feels to you where you're standing. So the interesting thing about that is, is it depends on where you are. So for example, recently there was a large earthquake in Haiti. I didn't feel it because I live in Colorado. Okay, but if you lived close to Haiti or in Haiti, you definitely felt it. Okay, here's an example. They're called shake maps. Okay, here's two examples. This first one is a shake map, map of the 1906 earthquake in San Francisco. All right. Now, if you notice here, it has to do with uh, the colors. Okay, so if you look down here, okay, this uh, graph right here talks about the intensity. The more red it is, the more intense it is. If there's no feeling, it's uh, white. There's, everybody felt this earthquake on this map. And you get blue out here. This blue right here is um, not very, a very light earthquake. But if you were uh, a, a red, so if you kind of look here and here and here, then you have more of a red. So it feels very violent to extreme. Okay. Conversely, if we move to the second graph, as we move to the second graph, this is the 1989 earthquake of San Francisco. And again, you can kind of see the same kind of, it's the same intensity situation, but the most important part was near Santa Cruz, uh, which probably they would say that's a violent, and that's, you see, you can determine the intensity of an earthquake by how close you are. There's a scale, which is a Roman numeral scale that measures intensity, goes from Roman numeral 1, 2, 3, etc., and a, a 10 plus is, of course, a very extreme. It depends on how close you are to the earthquake, okay? Intensity. Okay, now magnitude is a different thing altogether. Okay, what is magnitude? Our next geo word is magnitude. Now, magnitude is the total amount of energy that comes from the volcano. All right, you might have heard of something called the Richter scale, and that's what we're kind of talking about. Now, when we have energy that's outputted in certain things, okay, um, we can have something right here. For example, a, a moderate lightning bolt will have a, uh, a magnitude of two and some change here. The Oklahoma City bombing was about a three. Again, if you were next to it, the intensity would have been very bad, right? A large lightning bolt, you can say three and some change here, etc. The average tornado, about five. The Hiroshima bomb, six and some change. Um, and then if we go to Mount St. Helens right here, seven and some change. The Alaskan earthquake um, of 1964, about nine and some change. So here's the idea is the energy release, they've kind of got an equivalent pounds of explosive. So if it's like a two, it's like 120. And then it goes to 4,000. Now, 120 to 4,000, that's a big jump, right? 4,000 to 120,000. 120,000 to 4 million. 4 million to 120 million. 120 million to 4 billion. 4 billion to 120 billion. You see, this is, uh, is not going up evenly. So if you draw a graph, um, you would find uh, this is much, much more intense. In fact, it's, let's use a kind of a mathematical term. This is called a logarithmic scale. Now, you probably don't understand logarithms yet because your math may not be at that level yet. But on your calculator, you'll find the button that says log, L-O-G. And that means that things go up very, very quickly. And so if you have uh, something, an earthquake with six, a seven is actually 32 times more energetic than a, uh, a seven. A six, a seven is 32 times more energy than a, than a six. Yeah, that's what I meant to say. So it's, it's a very interesting scale. So when you say seven to eight, you're talking about a, a orders of magnitude, as we would say, much, much higher. All right, another word is, is uh, amplification. Amplification really has to do with the soil type or the rock type that your uh, building is on top of or you are. If you look at this picture, an interesting thing about this picture is that some buildings in this particular earthquake were totally destroyed here, and some buildings were not. Why is that? 
Well, it has to do with amplification. It really has to do with what, to what type of soil they built these houses on. Also, probably how well they built these buildings. But an important part is the soil type. As the energy goes through, because the same energy basically hit this region, why did some buildings survive and others not? Well, let's take a look at an animation that will, will tell us that very much thing. All right, so here is um, an animation um, from the United States Geological Survey. And I'm going to push play here. We're going to have an earthquake that's going to take place at right over here. OK, this is, this is looking down. And this picture right here is looking cross-section. I want you to notice something, OK? As the earthquake happens, it sends out these lines. Now, if you look at these lines, some of the lines are thin and some of them are thick. The thickest line is right here in this valley. You see the valley? The, the lines are very thick right here. And that's really the problem is, is as this, um, the energy goes through here, it's amplified. And it makes it more, um, well, more energetic. More energy is felt here because it, it, it's amplified because of the type of uh, rocks and or sediments that are in uh, this particular valley. These sediments here that are dark brown are most likely um, soft sediments. And that's going to make uh, it much more um, felt, uh, the energy will be amplified here. If you go through a very strong like bedrock, very strong rock, it's not amplified and the energy just passes through. So it's important that you build your house um, on, on bedrock. I, I had a cousin, I still have a cousin, but he used to live in San Francisco and where he lived he said, I'm very happy because you see I live in a place where it's um, was built upon bedrock. And when it's on bedrock, this may even be San Francisco, I don't know, if it's built on bedrock um, then his house would survive. Those people who had had their houses built on more of a sandy type soil, it would be amplified and their houses would be much more readily destroyed. All right, this next one is an amazing thing. It's called liquefaction. Everybody say liquefaction. Liquefaction is where when the earthquake occurs, the soil turns really to liquid. The energy gets so strong, it turns to liquid. And when it turns to liquid, these houses, for example, this one over here, just essentially, um, it gets sort of mushy, and then it be the soil sort of turns to a liquid. Um, yeah, it's very interesting. Let's watch a short video clip on liquefaction. Hi, my name is Dr. Ellen Rathke, and I'm an associate professor of geotechnical engineering at the University of Texas at Austin. And now I'm going to talk to you a little bit today about liquefaction. Liquefaction is an liquefaction. Liquefaction. Liquefaction is an important soil phenomenon that occurs during earthquakes, where the soil turns to a liquid and can no longer hold up the buildings and structures that lie above. So let me show you an example of liquefaction over here in our liquefaction tank. We see we've got a nice saturated sand deposit, and we've got an orange UT structure on top. And before the earthquake, the building is stable, it can be held up by the soil, and everything is going fine. But what happens when an earthquake comes and shakes the ground? Let's take a look. Because the soil turns into a liquid, it can no longer hold the, bil the building up. The building settles into the ground and tilts over on its side. So this is an important ground failure phenomenon that occurs during earthquakes. How does this relate to the NICE equipment at the University of Texas at Austin? Well, let's look over to my left. And we see the T-Rex large mobile shaker. And researchers at the University of Texas and other universities around the country are using T-Rex to learn more about liquefaction. T-Rex shakes the ground severely, almost like a mini earthquake. And we can embed instrumentation in the ground and measure the soil's response during these mini earthquakes. So we can learn more about liquefaction as it happens in the ground, just like it does during earthquakes. So why do we have liquefiable soil deposits? Well, let's try and look geologically at how these deposits are created. If we look at our liquefaction tank here, I can change the water conditions such that we now have a water and soil mixture. And what happens then is as the water recedes over geologic time, the soil settles out into a very loose structure with the water still in between the grains. So now we've experienced a million years of geologic time. Well, probably less, maybe about 10,000 years of geologic time. and. Humans have come and decided to build their home here because it's a nice flat area uh, that's good for building. 
But if an earthquake comes, that's when the soil liquefies. Wow, that was pretty cool. So uh, learn from.